this room to me was the most challenging from a construction standpoint and from how we engage the room. The room did not have these built-ins, so we created these built-ins. As a way you can see, it's a very long room with somewhat low ceilings, which can be hard to, to deal with. And so we separated the space and offer more of an opportunity to showcase framed art in an unusual way. And it also created a nice little vestibule to walk into the back of the house and also um, to go outside. We ripped out the old mantle that was too tall and too uninteresting and we put in this beautiful vintage Carrera marble. I think that most people agree that leopard is somewhat of a neutral, even though it has a bit of a chaotic, crazy pattern. It's also great because it hides all of your spills. The room we're sitting in now, I affectionately call the talking room. The talking room was inspired by a two-year-old and a five-year-old. You can come in this room only to talk and read. If you want to play, you got to go to the playroom or the family room. It's really about conversation and having parties. We've danced in here, um, cut cakes. Often I hear clients say, well, I'm not going to buy this. I can't do that because of my children. What I have found is if you raise your kids in the environment, they learn to respect it and they understand it. They appreciate it, and so as they mature into adults, they're already comfortable with it. The living room is a really great collection of things I've acquired. We did some minor changes. We changed the window treatments. We changed the furniture layout. We used all the furniture we had. This room, I feel like, is a great representation of how I think about design in terms of this kind of sweet but modern and handmade wallpaper paired with like army green curtains. So there was just this sort of like a masculine feminine moment. All the color that's in this entire house is represented in this room in one way or another and in different proportions. It's a lot like a recipe, but this room is comfortable. It seats a lot of people and it's curious. The living room dining room is really created as a contemporary space, you know, where it's all in one living. It's not as though you have a private dining space and a private living space. This is a pied -a -terre, so the client visits maybe once every other month. So what we did was we floated a center hall library dining table in the middle of the space. Right now it's loaded with books and accessories. And, you know, living in Manhattan, you have to be multifunctional. This table, has two leaves and can seat eight for dinner. So there are basically four chairs and two ottomans that pull up to the table and you can easily have six to eight for dinner. If you are entertaining or if you just have one guest, you have an intimate space like this. It also opens up to really having a party or having multiple people here. I wanted this home to feel just very welcoming and warm, where people could come because we entertain often with family and friends. And I think that also is very important, not just in my own home, but in all of my projects. I knew I wanted the living area to be closer to the windows where there's natural sunlight, and I wanted the dining area to be closer to the kitchen. I also wanted to create a divide and have the fireplace act as the divider between the living area and the dining area. When you first glance into the living room, everyone loves the rod that holds the three different pieces of artwork in a vertical line. They also love the antique Egyptian architectural prints over the green sofa. Because there's such high ceilings, it really elevates your eye so you can appreciate the height of the space. The trickiest thing for me in designing the space is finding something that could function as a media console, but also didn't look so overtly like a media console. It was one of my favorite antique dealers in Maine. I was lucky enough to purchase this from him. I love it so much because it has the marble top, so it doesn't feel as precious as just like an all wooden dresser. But at the same time, it's very versatile. I can store my tableware in there, linens, It's about pattern, this incredible kind of tapestry over here. It's about 
contrasting patterns. So I've put a zebra hide on top of a black and white Keeleman. So you've got these black and white stripes going in different directions. I've got these kind of ikat patterned chairs over here. As much contrast as possible. I just think it's beautiful. There has to be a focal point. And so I tried to keep the focal point, this beautiful like egg yolk chair at the end of the room. There's somewhere for your eye to go and you're not completely distracted by the masses of pattern and color. Some of the challenges with the home and the neighborhood in particular is that it is the wettest neighborhood in South Africa, in an area behind Table Mountain that kind of funnels a whole bunch of water down. So we had to warm up the space, we had to soften the space, and I've used a lot of drapes and I've used a lot of softness, all to make it feel a little bit more cozy. We're standing in the library, which is immediately off of all of the public spaces. This is what I call a double-layered um, mill-worked room. We asked the client if we could actually do kind of this effort of creating special little moments throughout this room, which we did, starting with the idea of the two little built-in benches with leather seats that flank the fireplace that led to the built-in bookcases both sides. The big ticket number is the gold leaf ceiling in the living room. And I would say that that ceiling and the fact that we paneled big squares, all of the living room and the library in ceruzed oak, were the two main factors in setting the overall tone for the space. For me, once you get the architecture, once you get the architecture of the envelope right, then you can basically do anything inside, as far as, you know, kind of furniture and rugs and, and that kind of thing. But the important thing is to get the, the envelope right. And once we had our ceiling and our walls, we were able to move forward. 